We all feel like giving up sometimes. We all go through times where we feel like God is one million miles away. But we don't have any idea what he's doing when we're tired, when we're weary, when we think we just can't go on. Living through a season of struggle that doesn't seem like it's ever going to end. Walking through a trial that you have to endure and it causes you to wonder if you can take the next small step of faith. When this year started, you thought it was going to be a great year of provision, but the provision didn't come. When this year began, you didn't think it would be a season of sickness, and now all you're doing is praying for healing. When this year started, you were filled with hope and enthusiasm, but all you've known is torment and anguish. It has been a long year. It's a year where you've struggled in your business. It's a year where maybe you've struggled in your home or your marriage. It's a year in which the things that you thought you would never see happen, not only did they happen, but they keep happening over and over and over again. First, you cannot give up. When you enter into your long season, you've got to give it all you've got. When people go into a season of struggle, the first thing that they want to do is take a sabbatical. But whenever trouble comes, the only way that you can get through trouble is work your way through it. Don't quit. How did Joseph survive in what others drowned in? Effort. Effort comes before excellence. When Joseph was on his knees scrubbing Potiphar's floors, God was standing over him and he says, I know this doesn't look like much, Joseph, but I promise you, you're closer to the breakthrough than you've ever been before. As a child of God, be a person of excellence. Too many people walk through the long years and they do not survive them. Why? Because rather than give it all they've got, they give up. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. He said, whatever your hands find to do, do it with all of your might. Why? As unto the Lord and not unto men. God is watching. God is the one who will reward you. When that time comes, let your life be lived in such a way that what you get to hear is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Don't give up. When you're walking through the long years, not only do you not give up, but you can't give in. It's going to be in the hardest seasons of your life that the greatest temptations are going to come. Not just the temptation to quit, but the temptation to walk away from your faith, the temptation to do what you thought you'd never do. There's two things that you can do with trouble. You can let trouble make you better or you can let trouble make you bitter. And that's your choice. You know, we all suffer, don't we? We go through things. You know, the first thing we want to do when we're suffering is we want to run. We want to get away from it some way, shape, or form. But you know what? You got to go through the hard part to get to the good part. You got to go through the hard part to get to the good part. And that doesn't mean the hard part's always fair. Life is not always fair, but God is fair. God is a God of justice, and that's one of my favorite things about the character of God. And justice means that He always makes wrong things right. God always makes wrong things right if we trust Him and if we handle the wrong thing in the right way. And so when you're going through hard things, you got two choices. You can give in and give up, or you can get strong. Amen? And I believe that we can do anything that God gives us to do, but the one thing we cannot do is give up when it gets hard. I don't know what you might be going through today, but I want you to know that God knows what you're going through today. And he knows every little bit of pain that you've got. He knows every tear that you've cried. And I know you've asked him many times, why did my loved one die? Why did I lose my job? Why did I lose my retirement? Why did my house burn down? Why, did, why was my house destroyed? Why, 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 why? You know what? Trade all those whys for God, I trust you. God, I trust you. I don't know why. 
but I love you enough that I don't have to know why. I'll tell you what, I believe that God is good. And I don't care what the devil tries, I don't care what the world does, I don't care what wicked, evil people do, my God is a good God, and I believe that anybody who doesn't believe in Him is making a serious mistake in their life. You can't just believe, believe God when you're on the mountaintop. You got to know how to make it through the valleys and stay victorious in your life. People want to know, why do we have to endure this? People ask God, what's your plan? Why these seasons of struggle? In this world, you will have tribulation. You can't deny that. Why? Because the source of truth said that. Job said, as surely as sparks fly upward, men are born to trouble. Everyone that God used, everyone that God had a plan for, everyone who did something great for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, they went through a struggle. They all graduated from the same university of adversity. And God has a seat saved for you. But what was it about their mindset that would allow them to look at a season of struggle and say, think it not strange, or they would look at a season of struggle and then they would shout with joy? This was not some made up outcome that they were striving for. It was something that they truly enjoyed. Why? Because they recognized that whenever they were in a season of struggle, God was growing them. Whenever they were in a season of struggle, God was preparing them. Whenever they were in a season of struggle, he was getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon them. They didn't know how big the blessing would be. They didn't know how the outpouring would come. They didn't know all of the details, but they knew that God's hand was upon them and that he was taking them somewhere that was greater than what they could ask, think, or imagine. So when the problem came, they just started praising God and saying, thank you, Jesus, you've still got a plan for me. When the struggle came, they said, you know, I'm going to be stronger when this is over. I'm going to be able to endure more. I'm going to be able to do more. I'm going to be able to receive more. I'm going to be able to accomplish more. And I assure you, child of God, if he did that for them, he's doing it for you. Half of the scriptures about suffering, half of them, which this is really good news, are all about God delivering us from suffering. However, not one of those says when. Be patient. Everyone has to wait. Everyone has to endure. But here's what God says will happen for you when you do wait. In Isaiah, he said, they that wait upon the Lord, those who are patient, he will renew their strength. They'll mount up like wings of eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. Because when you have patience to wait upon the Lord, you begin to recognize that his promises are what gives you strength. It's not the outcome that gives you strength. It's the promise that gives you strength. But you're gonna have to go through things. I don't care whether you start a business, whether you're raising a child, you want to get married, you want to have a good marriage, you want to get your home paid off, you want to be in ministry, whatever it is, you're going to get some opposition from Satan. A wide door of opportunity opened unto me, Paul said, and with it many adversaries. And the reason that you have tribulation is because everything that God gives you, the enemy wants to take it from you. It's a principle. God gives you peace, he wants to give you worry. God gives you health, he wants to give you sickness. God gives you more than enough, he wants to take your more than enough so that you have insufficiency. Why? Because he wants you to doubt every promise that God ever made. Everything that God has given you in your life, you have to realize there is an enemy who is very real and he wants to take it. Jesus said in the world, guess what? You will have tribulation. Cheer up. I have overcome the world. You know what? We've already read the end of the book. We know what's going to happen. Be of good cheer because the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. 
Be of good cheer because the enemy that you're facing, even though he's trying to cause you to doubt, even though he's trying to create worry, even though he's trying to build up your concerns, be of good cheer because I've already made a public spectacle of him at a place called Calvary. I have already humiliated him. All you have to do is remind him of my name. All you have to do is remind him of the power of my blood. All you have to do is remind him that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And be of good cheer, child of God. The battle is the Lord's and the victory is yours through the power of his mighty name. We have the privilege of trusting God. No matter what we're going through, we have the privilege of trusting God. All things work together for good. Not all things are good, but all things work together far good to those who love God and who trust Him. Put your trust in God. Don't ever blame God for the wickedness and the evil in the world. And try not to live your life saying, why God, why? Replace a lot of that with, look, God, I trust you. I know you're good, and I know this is going to work out right. Wake up and recognize that if you've been through some stuff, God was with you while you were walking through it, and he's with you now. He's still on the throne. He still has a plan for you. He's still working it out in your life. He is not going to leave you. He is not going to forsake you. He has the way through the wilderness, and if you look to him, he'll lead you and guide you and give you a blessing that you cannot contain. I'm pleading with you today, whatever God is trying to do in your life right now, even if you don't understand it, don't run away from it. Trust God. Let him do what he wants to do in you so you can have the life that he really wants you to have.